How are you doing? Can you see me now? Hi there. Hi people on Facebook. How are you doing? Um, welcome everybody. Welcome to our intermediate English class. Uh, especially all the new people that joined the class today, that joined the Facebook group. Okay, a lot of people joined the group today because somebody asked uh, that she wanted to learn English and I offered to join the group so a lot of people joined today all right so that's uh, very good welcome everybody if you want to participate in this class you have to click on this link I'm going to write the link here so you can uh, participate also that's the idea okay Julian how are you doing can you hear me Hello, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. I'm very excited about today's class. Uh, I thought there was going to be a lot of people today, but they haven't showed up. Anyway, it's, al it's always the same. The less the better, I think. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to wait a little bit before we begin with the class, all right? So, people, gente que esté viendo la clase en Facebook, que se haya unido hoy al grupo, los invito a que participen en la clase. Tienen que hacer clic en el link que aparece aquí abajo, que lo voy a dejar fijado en los comentarios, para que ustedes también se puedan unir. Así uh, participan en la videollamada y aquí van a poder ver, en la videollamada van a poder ver todos los comentarios, las anotaciones que hacemos en el blog de notas, el libro que utilizamos para las clases, eh, la pizarra cuando haya que dar alguna explicación y el diccionario en caso que sea necesario también. ¿Vale? Así que los dejo invitados para que se unan a la clase en la videollamada. Today we have intermediate English class, so today we're going to have English only. All right? I'm going to speak English only. Um, Before we begin, antes que empecemos, alguien me preguntó si es que se hacía una prueba de eh, una evaluación, una prueba evaluación para poder participar en las clases. No, no puedo estar haciendo una prueba evaluación a cada persona que se quiera unir. Así que el que se quiere unir a las clases de preintermedio o intermedio, en realidad, debe hacerlo bajo su propia conciencia, sabiendo que si entiende inglés, si es que conoce eh, el presente simple, el presente continuo, tiene un vocabulario y cree que se puede manejar tal vez en un nivel preintermedio o intermedio, podría participar en ese nivel, que se hace los días martes y jueves. Hoy día vamos a estar haciendo ese nivel. Ahora, si no sabe mucho de inglés, no entiende mucho de gramática, tampoco tiene mucho vocabulario y le gustaría aprender desde un comienzo, entonces... Háganlo, pero eh, en las clases de lunes y miércoles, y si quieren participar de oyente en las clases de los martes y los jueves, también lo pueden hacer, son bienvenidos, no hay problema en que estén durante las cuatro clases de la semana. Eh, así que están invitados a participar ya sea en inglés básico lunes y miércoles o en inglés intermedio los martes y jueves. Ok, hi Vicky, welcome. Ok, guys, so uh, I think we're going to begin with the class, all right? Aquí hay una chica, ok, también la clase pasada pasó exactamente lo mismo Que decía que no podía ingresar a la clase, pero yo sí la vi en la clase <laughs> All right Well, ok, so, everybody welcome today, everybody, all the new people here in the group also welcome And uh, let's begin with the class, all right Last Tuesday, last Tuesday I'm sorry because I couldn't tell you before the class that I wasn't going to be able to help you, okay? I wasn't gonna be able to give the class. So I'm sorry about last Tuesday uh, because I was absent and I couldn't give you the lesson. So we're going to catch up, okay? We're going to uh, recover all that um, information that we couldn't give on Tuesday and today we're going to work with the book too and we're going to work with the listening and reading all right because um we have been talking about the simple past we have been talking about the regular and irregular verbs in the past and we have been talking about the structures in the past uh for affirmative negative and interrogative sentences for both the verb to be 
and also the rest of the verbs. All right. Now I t I told you that I told you that the verb to be is an independent verb, and the verb to be has its own rules. All right. So the structures for the verb to be to make an affirmative, a negative, or an interrogative sentences are not going to be the same as the other verbs, the, the rest of the verbs, okay? We call them full verbs. Full verbs, for example, eat, go, have, sing, dance, sleep, okay? All those verbs, all those actions are, are called uh, full verbs. And the rest, sorry, the, the exception is the verb to be. The exception, the only exception is going to be the verb to be because it has its own rules, all right? Um, first question. Can you see me very well? Can you see everything? <laughs> because last class, last Thursday, we had a problem with the streaming and there was a problem with the whiteboard too, so I didn't know that you couldn't see the screen. Can you see the screen now? Can you see the whiteboard? Can you see the this? Can you see the notepad? Can you see the book? The whiteboard? Can you see yeah. this? Yeah. Is it working now? Yes, teacher. I can't see. I can't see the screen. Can you read what I heard? What I read? What I wrote here? Sorry. Can you can you see this? Yes. Yes. Can you read it? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Can you pronounce it? What does it say? Hello. All right. Just to make sure. <laughs> Hello. Very good. Okay. So, uh, all right. Last class, we talked about the sentences for affirmative, negative, and interrogative sentences. I, I gave you a comparison between the verb to be and the verb to do, right? Um, I think I have that here in the whiteboard, but I'm not going to show you, okay? I'm going to begin with something new. Today, we're going to begin working with the irregular verbs, okay, and in the past tense. Irregular verbs. Irregular verbs, okay? And this is in the simple past tense. Chicos, los nuevos que están en Facebook... Les vuelvo a repetir, si quieren participar de la clase, ver la pizarra, ver las anotaciones, el libro, la participación de los participantes, el diccionario y todo, tienen que meterse al link que les dejé ahí en los comentarios, ¿vale? Con eso se pueden, se pueden meter a la clase y de hecho creo que alguien llegó y no lo dejé entrar. Sí, ahí está, Jocelyn. Ahí sí. Ya, yeah. today we are going to talk about the irregular verbs in the simple past tense, all right? Before this, we talked about the regular verbs. Remember, regular verbs are the typical verbs ending in ed, okay? These verbs end in ed, so that's why they are called regular verbs. Today, we are not going to talk about regular verbs. We're going to talk about the irregular verbs, okay? Um, irregular verbs are a definite group. Okay, they are a group of verbs and they are a specific group, okay? It's a finite group. It's not unlimited, it's not um, like uh, indefinite, yeah, that's, that's the word. This is a definite group, okay? There is a number of verbs that belong to the irregular verbs and that's all. Okay, we're not going to have new verbs. Why? Because irregular verbs are verbs that were created in the past, okay, in the, during the history of the language, when the Germanic tribes began speaking English, or not even English, it was something, a mixture between different languages, okay? So, the first irregular verbs come from the past. And now, most of the verbs that we have now are regular verbs, okay? Most of the verbs, most of the actions that we have today are regular. For example, if I say, Google, you know that we have the action to Google, okay? To Google something. When you search something, you are Googling, 
something, right? And this is a regular verb. So I can say, I googled, right? I googled um, your company, sorry, I googled your company, right? And that means that you searched that company on Facebook, sorry, on Google, right? Of course, <laughs> because you googled it. So this is a regular verb and this ends in ed, okay? If I create a new verb from this day and on in the future, most or I think all of them are going to be re uh, regular verbs, okay? They are going to follow the same structure. The verb ed in the past tense and ed in the participle, okay? Now, think about your routine. Think about your daily routine. What do you do every day? Tell me what you do in your uh, afternoon. Tell me about your typical day after lunch. What do you do? Come on, you can participate. <laughs> you can participate, guys. What do you do on a regular day after lunch? Take breakfast, the first one. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first thing in the morning, right? But yeah. after lunch, what do you do after lunch? After lunch? Mm -hmm. uh, I do exercise. You do exercise after lunch? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm reading, I'm reading Facebook, the streaming, and some, somebody wrote, al del me divierte, que cuente el chiste, nos reímos todo. Well, sorry, Alejandra, I don't know what happened, but I don't care, okay? If somebody is laughing at it, si alguien se está riendo, it doesn't matter. They can laugh at it, I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> I would like them to participate in the class, all right? So, um, Victoria, you do exercise, right? After, after, after lunch. So I'm going to write it here. She, today, sorry, can I ask you this? Did you do exercise today after lunch? Yes, I did. You did? All right. So she did exercise after lunch. After that, what did you do? Um, I'm cooking. I cook it. You, sorry, you cook before or after you do exercise? Uh, before you exercise. Okay, so you cook, then you have lunch, and after that you do exercise. Yeah. All right. Let me write it here. Now here, Alexa Alejandra is uh, saying that she washes the dishes. All right. I'm going to write that too. So one Victoria um, cooks. Right. Did you cook today? Yeah. All right. Victoria cooked. Uh, what did you do? What did you cook today? Garbanzos. I don't All know right. who is in English. <laughs> uh, let me let me try to remember how you say garbanzos. Um, because I know how you beans? say because beans those are porotos, right? Or yes. caraotas or frijoles. We call them here uh, porotos in Chile. I know in Mexico you call them frijoles, in other places call them caraota, pero esos son los negros, all right? I don't know what you call them in other places. But the thing is, uh, no, garbanzos are not called like that. You have lentils. Let me, let me try to check this, okay? Hey, Google, ¿cómo se dice garbanzo en inglés? En inglés se dice chickpea. Chickpea, chickpea. Let me check. Let me check it, okay? Check P, something like that. Mm, check P, could it be? It? She. Is it it's with a. S? S H? I am not a fan of uh, <laughs> this kind of food. <laughs> I mean, I like them. I like them, <laughs> but I don't know how you. I think it's with double E. Check P. Yeah. No, no, it's with a. I or E. Let me go. Let me go to the to Google. Okay. Let me Google this. Let me Google this. All right. I'm going to Google this. Um. Sorry, I'm not reading the chat. Chickpea. Ah, okay. Let me check it. 
Maybe we don't need to translate. Yeah, I, I know we don't need to translate it, but I need I I would like to know how you say that in English so I can write the the example. <laughs> Chickpeas, there there they are. Chickpea. Okay. I hope you know them. I hope you know this. They are similar to lentils and beans. Okay. All right. Thank you, Vicky. So, Victoria cooked uh, chick peas, all right? Chick peas. Then she did exercise after lunch. Um, and here, Alejandra, Alejandra says, Alejandra washed the dishes, right? She washed the dishes. Good. Next, what did you do after lunch? After that, anybody. You can all participate. Everybody can participate. What do you what do you usually do after lunch? Okay, very good. Julian. Julian, did you attend soccer class today? All right. Do you do this every day? Do you attend soccer class every day? When do you attend soccer class? Can you tell me? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Is that right? I'm sorry about my hands. Sorry, I <laughs> yesterday I was working. Last night I was working and I had a problem with the ink, with the printer. So my hands are kind of blackish. Uh, well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so and, uh, somebody else. I don't know. What did you do before this class or after lunch? Uh, after lunch, I go to the park and okay. I run. Every day? Uh, sometimes. Did yeah. you Did you go to the park today? Uh, no, today. Not today. I... All right, so here, Aaron didn't go to the park today, all right? Uh, did you run today? I don't think so. Uh, repeat me. Did you run? Yeah, I can repeat. Did you run today? Uh, no, today I, I didn't, didn't go, I didn't go to run. Okay, very good. You didn't run today. So, uh, Aaron, I'm going to add it here. I didn't go to the park. Uh, no, I'm going to write another one, okay? Because I don't want to write a very long sentence. So, I don't, uh, I don't didn't run today. Okay, good. Somebody else. Um, today, after lunch, I took a nap. Do you take naps usually do you know what is to take a nap so the teacher took a nap after lunch a very short nap right because i needed to sleep a little bit to feel uh to to, to get more energy all right to keep on going with the rest of the day what do you do after lunch can you tell me guys on facebook girls on facebook what do you do well i'm asking this I'm asking you this because I want to have a list of examples so we can uh, distinguish, okay, so we can tell regular from irregular verbs, okay? We have irregular verbs around everything we do every day, okay? Everything we do includes uh, a, an irregular verb. For example, uh, if I see, right, this is, the, the irregular verbs are related to the basic actions in life. Usually the basic actions in life, like the most elementary actions in life, are related to irregular verbs. For example, eat, that's basic, right? You did the cleaning. Okay, well, cleaning is also something, <laughs> something very basic, very elementary, right? necessary for everybody so um 
doing the cleaning is well the verb do is also an irregular verb i'm going to write them here okay i'm going to write them here in the in the whiteboard Alejandra, chicos, los que están viendo la transmisión en Facebook, les recomiendo que se metan a la clase. Hay un comentario que está fijado aquí que dice bit.ly slash 123 inglés. Pueden ingresar a la clase. No tienen que activar su micrófono, no tienen que activar su cámara, no tienen que participar si no quieren. ¿ok? Es todo al gusto del de consumidor, ¿ya? el gusto de cada uno de ustedes si es que lo quieren hacer. Solo se los recomiendo para que puedan ver los verbos que estamos escribiendo, la... Eh, las notas que estoy tomando, el libro, ¿ok? Más que nada para eso, ¿ya? Así que si quieren ver la experiencia completa de clase, métanse el link. Si no, lo pueden ver a través de Facebook si no están interesados en ver el resto y solo escuchar. Ok, so, I told you, the basic elements in uh, life are usually related to the irregular verbs. For example, see, ¿ok? To see. The past tense of the verb to see is... Do you know that? Do you know the past tense so. of this? So. Very so. good, right? So. Okay, the past tense of the verb see is so. I'm going to add here a title. Sorry, I'm going to write a title here so we know what we are writing. What we are writing here, okay? So, this is the... Um, I'm going to write here the base form. Base. I'm going to write here the simple past. Simple past, okay? And here I'm going to write the uh, past participle, but we don't need to know the past participle now. So I'm not going to write the past participle now, okay? I, I don't want to confuse you. I don't want you to get confused. So I'm not going to add the past participle now. Just the base form and the simple past. So, see, all right? Eat. Do you know the past tense of the verb eat? What did you eat today? Tell me, what did you eat today? Eight. Very good. What did you eat? What did you eat today? Marleni Yerlin, ¿qué nivel es? Estamos en este momento trabajando en nivel preintermedio, ¿ok? Um, no es básico, pero es solo en inglés. Entonces, si tú puedes manejar una conversación en inglés y crees que la puedes comprender, estamos trabajando con el pasado simple. All right. Ahí voy a aceptar a las personas que a ah, Alejandra. Ok, very good. Y Marleni, ya, yeah, adelante. Dime, Aaron. Uh, I have a question. What's your question? Uh, what, what is the difference between uh, the verb see and watch and look? Wash and look. Watch, sorry. Are you talking about wash, like washing your hands? Or watch when you talk about uh, the action of looking at something? A watch, watch. Okay. Uh, there is a there is a very basic difference between see, look, and watch. Okay. Usually, see. Okay, see is only the the sense. Okay, it's it's, it's only when you have the basic uh, sense of having the ability of looking at something okay if you open your eyes you can see right you are not looking at something specifically but look is when you move your eyes okay your eyes to a specific point okay for example look at me look at me in other words move your eyes right move your eyes right at me okay look at me move your eyes uh, straight at me. Watch, on the contrary, means that you are having, you are, you are paying attention, okay, you are paying attention um, to something like a screen or a presentation or a movie, okay, that's why you you usually say I'm watching a movie or I'm watching TV, you don't say I'm looking TV or you don't say I, I'm looking at a movie right you watch a movie you watch a TV you watch the screen because you are spending time okay you are spending time looking at something right and look is only the action of moving your eyes uh, in a specific direction okay 
I'm going to tell you, I'm going, let's, let's look up the meaning on the dictionary, okay? Hey Google, what's the meaning of watch? This is the definition of watch. Look at or observe attentively over a period of time. Look at or observe attentively over a, over a period of time, okay? So there is a period of time. When you watch, there is a period of time. And when you look, it's only the action of moving your eyes at something. So, hey Google, what's the meaning of look? According to Wikipedia, the name Luke is the English <laughs> no. form of the hey, Google, name Luke. Stop. Stop. Hey Google, what's the meaning of the action look? Sorry, I didn't understand. All right. Hey Google, what does look mean? According to Wikipedia, the name Luke no. is the okay. English hey, form Google. of the Latin name Lucas. Hey Google. It is direct. Stop. All right, it doesn't matter. Well, the thing is, I'm going to show you here on the screen, but that's that's the difference, okay? That's the difference. Here, that's the definition. To turn one's eyes towards something or in some direction in order to see, okay? So, to explain this in Spanish, see, sorry, wait a sec. Okay, the verb to see is the ability that uh, you have to um, perceive the world around you, okay? To look at something. Then, look is when you move your eyes uh, in some direction, okay? In a direction. And watch is when you spend time looking at something for over a period of time, all right? Is that clear, Aaron? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Clear. Are you sure it's clear? Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Are you sure it's clear? Okay. Sure All right. For example, if I say, um, do you remember that movie, The Sixth Sense, El Sexto Sentido, cuando él decía, I see dead people? No sé si la habrán visto, igual es un poco antigua esta película. But when, they, when, when the kid said, I see dead people, right? It means he has the ability to see people who have died, okay? He has the ability to see the people who have died, okay? I can tell you, I see in black and white. I see, I, I don't see colors. I see only with one eye, right? So, that means that you have the ability to see, to use your eye, okay? Um, that's the verb to see. And when I say, for example, look at me, or when I say, hey, look at that, look there, right? Or wh what are you looking at? Are you looking at me? That means that your eyes are over uh, on me, right? That you're uh, moving your eyes in my direction, okay? And when I tell you, uh, let's watch a movie. Why don't we watch uh, TV? Or are you watching a TV show these days? Yeah? Did you watch this video on YouTube? That means that you spend time watching at something. Okay? Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. okay. I, I hope it's clear. I hope it's clear. Okay. Very good. Now, let me go back. So, in everyday life, in everyday, uh, in our daily routine, a lot of things, a lot of actions that we do are irregular verbs. Okay, so see is an irregular verb. Eat is an irregular verb. Okay, hear is an irregular verb too. Hear. Okay, the past tense of the verb is heard. Then um, we also have, for example, other basic actions like go. This is also a basic action, and the past tense is when, yeah. exactly. Or the other basic action here that Alex Alejandra mentioned, uh, you do something, right? You do something, and in the past, you did something. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. Let's continue. Other typical things in, in your life. For example, you uh, take a shower, or you have breakfast. So, have 
is also a, an irregular verb because That's the past tense is had or take when you take something, right? This is very basic. I'm taking the glass, okay? I'm taking the glass with my hand. Ojo, no confundan. Take con have, cuando se refiere a eh, consumir algo, okay? Si yo digo, I am taking the glass, but I'm having... I am having water, right? I'm having a glass of water. Quiere decir que estoy consumiendo un vaso de agua. Estoy sirviendo un vaso de agua. ¿Ok? Estoy bebiendo. Eso. Another verb. Drink. Ese verbo, the verb drink, is also an irregular verb. ¿Ok? We have the past tense. Drunk. Here took. And exactly. Drunk. Very good. This is the past tense of the verb drink. Any other thing? Any other action that you can add to your daily routine? For example, write. That's basic. Exactly. When you write something, very basic. And the past tense of this verb is wrote. Okay. So, what's the point? What's the point of this? Um, in English, we will find regular and irregular verbs. Okay, regular verbs usually form the past tense adding the ed ending. For example, work, right? Work. Oops, I don't know what happened here. This is a, a an e. Play. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> okay, but this verb worked. Okay, worked. This is a... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to delete this. I don't like this. Hold on. Wait a second. <laughs> okay. This is crazy. Se volvió loco. ¿Me escuchan? Yo creo que en este momento cuando empieza a fallar la clase. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, you can hear me very well. Okay, sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. Welcome, welcome all the new people who have joined the class right now. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the eraser. It doesn't want to work. I don't know why. <clears throat> so well, anyway. Okay, it's not working. Whatever. The thing is, in English. There are regular and irregular verbs, okay? Regular verbs usually form the past tense, okay? When we talk about the past, adding the ed ending at the end of the verb, okay? So, I work for this company, I work as a teacher, and yesterday I worked a lot, okay? Last week I worked from 8 in the morning, until nine uh, at night. Um, I worked too much before, okay? I worked a lot. That's in the past. That's a regular verb. Irregular verbs don't have specific rules to form the irregular ending, okay? That's why they are called irregular, because there are no rules, okay? There's no rules to form the past. For example, I was telling you, we have some verbs like eat and the past tense ate, okay? Ate, like the number, okay? Like the number eight, exactly the same pronunciation. Eight in the past. So, this morning I ate a sandwich and later for lunch I ate um, a piece of cake, all right? That's in the past, the verb ate. Then, if I say I took a nap, right? I have the verb take. The past tense of this verb is took. So, today I took a nap and ate and took are really different, okay? Or for example, um, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot. Forgot is the past tense of the verb forget, right? Forget, forgot. They are different. 
the past tense, the, look at them, ate, took, forgot, totally different, all right? Another example, for example, see, right? The past tense, saw, totally different, totally different. So, there is no rules, sorry, there are no rules to form the past tense of the irregular verbs. Unfortunately for us, we need to learn them. Okay, we need to learn them by heart. Hay que aprendérselos de memoria. Okay, remember in English, you, just, you say by heart. Ya, yeah? aprenderlo de corazón en inglés, by heart. In Spanish, de memoria. But that's the problem. We need to learn them by heart. ¿Qué pueden hacer? What can you do? You can write um, a list of verbs, okay, of different kind of actions. For example, everything you do in a day or everything you um, typically do for work. For example, I send emails. That's a verb, an irregular verb, right? Sent. I write emails. Write is also an irregular verb wrote in the past mm, yeah. what else i i meet people well not these days okay because of the pandemic but i usually meet with some clients and this is also an irregular verb okay the past yeah. tense is met exactly met so what you can do is look for other verbs that are similar to these verbs okay try to find similar verbs and try to make a list, okay, try to make a list, make, also an important verb in the past, made. made. Exactly. Try to make a list of all the similar verbs so maybe you can remember them because they look the same. Or you can write a list of irregular verbs because they are part of the same concept, okay, the same family. For example, if I talk about uh, sports, yeah, if we talk about sports, Maybe I can find um, irregular verbs related to sports, like, for example, run. Yeah, I think Julian wrote that verb exactly. Julian said run, and the past tense is run, okay? What is the difference in pronunciation of these verbs? Do you know the difference between run and the past tense? Or do you pronounce, it, do you pronounce them the, the same way? Is it the same? Is there anybody there? Who's talking there? <laughs> here. Okay, here you can see the difference. Okay, run, run, simple present, and run, okay, run is the past tense, run, run and run, run and run. There is a, a very slight difference between the pronunciation of the simple present and the simple past, okay? Simple present, run. Very simple, run, okay? I run 10 kilometers a day. I run every morning. I run with my girlfriend, okay? That's very simple. And run, 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 okay, run, that's in the past. Yesterday, I ran a lot. Yesterday, I ran in the afternoon, okay? I, uh, last week, I ran a marathon. I ran a marathon, okay? So, you have to pronounce the different vowels. Todavía no hemos aprendido estas diferentes vocales, así que no se las voy a exigir obviamente para nada. Pero es importante que sepan que hay una diferencia de pronunciación, okay? There's a difference in pronunciation between the simple present and the simple past of this verb, okay? Um, another, for example, swim. If we talk about swimming, right? Swim. Exactly, swim. That's the past tense of this verb. So we can make a list of similar verbs, right? Related to the same area, sports, maybe arts, or maybe uh, food, or uh, job, right? Your job, or university, right? And you can make a list of a lot of different actions and try to check which are regular verbs and which are irregular verbs, all right? Now, I want to work with the book because this part of the book has been <laughs> on hold for a lot of time. So let's listen to these four people talking about school. 
Yeah, we're going to learn, we're going to listen to them talking about what, lam what languages they learned at school. That's another important verb, learn. I'm going to add it here, learn. Okay, in the past tense, learned. And also teach. Teach, <laughs> teach is also uh, an irregular verb. And the irregular verb is taught. Yeah, what, uh, who's asking? What's your question? Uh, my question, uh, for me, I don't have uh, any question, mm -hmm. but the verb learn uh, also is a very uh, regular. Exactly, okay, very good, Tamara. The verb learn is a special verb because this verb has both the regular and the irregular form. Yeah, learn can be uh, irregular, as in this example, or it can also be learned, okay, learned, as in the regular verbs, okay? There are some verbs that have this specific structure, this specific pattern. So maybe you can also have a list of verbs that work both as a irregular and as, uh, sorry, as regular and irregular verbs, right? For example, dream. Dream is also another verb that uh, has the two forms, dreamt and dr uh, dreamed, right? If you go to the dictionary and look for them, dream, you're going to find here, but you, you can see this, dream and dreamt, dreamed and dreamt, right? Uh, all right. Antes que terminemos la clase, en un ratito más, Voy a responder cualquier pregunta que quieran hacer las personas nuevas, ¿ok? Para que podamos salir de las dudas y me gustaría que sigan participando, que sigan viniendo a la clase todos los días. So here you can see, dream is the simple or the base form, and then you have dreamed or dreamt, ¿ok? Dreamed or dreamed or dreamt, ¿all right? Those are the different pronunciations. Good. Um, let's go to the book then, ¿ok? Let's listen to the four people talking about the languages they learned at school. Okay, here we go. Listen, what languages did these people study in school? What languages did you learn in school? Keiko. All the students in my high school had to take English. It was required. And I needed English to get into my university. Mirka. Well, years ago, most people learned Russian, and only a few people took English. I studied both. Brad. I took Spanish last year, and most of my friends did too. There are a lot of Spanish speakers around here, so it's kind of useful. Paul. A lot of my classmates dropped French after ninth grade. Almost all of them, except me. But then later, some of them had to take evening classes because they needed it for work. Okay. Is it clear? Did you write the different languages that they learned at school or you would like to listen to this one more time? Can be one more time, please. Yeah, we can go, we can go one more time. All right. Let's listen to them one more time. Listen, what languages did these people study in school? What languages did you learn in school? Keiko. All the students in my high school had to take English. It was required. And I needed English to get into my university. Mirka. Well, years ago, most people learned Russian and only a few people took English. I studied both. Brad. I took Spanish last year, and most of my friends did too. There are a lot of Spanish speakers around here, so it's kind of useful. Paul. A lot of my classmates dropped French after ninth grade. Almost all of them, except me. But then later, some of them had to take evening classes because they needed it for work. Okay. I think it's simple, isn't it? Is it simple? 
for you? Was it simple? Let's talk about Keiko. What language did Keiko? What language did Keiko learn in school? English. All right. Keiko, Keiko learned English at school. Right? She said that she had to learn English because she needed English for something. She needed English for something in her professional career or for her uh yeah, exactly, for her career. Then what happened to uh Mirka? What language did Mirka learn? I listened to two languages. Russian. English. English and Russian. And Russian, okay? English and Russian, right? She learned both languages, English and Russian. Um can you tell can you tell the difference in pronunciation for all of them? They are all different. They all have different pronunciation, right? You can tell Keiko is from Japan probably. And it says in the book it says where she where she's from. It says Tokyo, right? She's from Tokyo. Then uh Mirka, it says uh Warsaw. Hey Google, where's Warsaw? Warsaw, Poland is 12,992 kilometers away. In Poland, okay? So Mirka is from Poland. She is Polish. Es de Pol Polonia, okay? Es Polaca. She's Polish from Poland. And she learned Russian and um English. And you can tell right you can tell you can identify their accent when they speak or at least you know that they are from those countries maybe you don't know exactly where which country she is from but you can tell that she's from one of those um asian countries okay then we have this other guy from los angeles brad all right where what what language did brad learn Spanish, very good, Spanish. right? He learned Spanish. And finally, we have this guy from Laos, Lagos, sorry, uh, Paul, right? Paul, French. what language? Sorry, can you repeat? French. French, very good, okay? French. So they, French. they learned, very good, they learned five different languages. We have English, French, Spanish, Russian, and um, I'm missing one of them. Or were they only four? I think there were four, right? English, Russian, uh, Spanish, and French. Exactly. So, I have a question for you. Did you learn any language at school? Did you learn any of these languages in school? I learned the English and French. Did you? I didn't learn uh, language. I don't. You, di you didn't learn languages in, in school? Not in the school, no, but in the university, I learned English and Portuguese. And Portuguese. Very good. I like Portuguese. So maybe lay later you can give us a lesson on Portuguese. Can be, can be. It could be, right? It could be. <laughs> Very good. Any other person who learned another languages? Do you speak other languages? Anybody? Chinese. Very good, nice. Do you know, my link? there is a person, there's a student that watches, who watches these lessons on YouTube, and he is a teacher of Chinese. So if you have any question, I can give you the name and you can maybe, make a connection or you can send him a message so you can ask questions and he's a quest uh, he's a teacher of the confucio institute here at the uh catholic university so i can recommend you okay thank you all right can you say something in chinese anything no, no, come no, on yet. anything <laughs> I'm not ready to start all right okay okay Share something like that. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Any other person? So we have Portuguese, Chinese. Anybody else who's speaking or who's learning any other language? 
No? I have, I have a question. German. Julian, are you learning German? What's your question, Vicky? What is the difference with the languages, for example, French, uh, Portuguese, with the local languages, for example, Mapudungun? What do you mean, what are the differences? Um, the different the name of the languages. La diferencia en nombrar un idioma, y en este caso la lengua Mapuche. Ambas se dicen languages? Languages. Okay, first thing, we're going to try to correct that, okay? The pronunciation of this word is language, okay? Language. Language. G, G. The final sound, the final sound is a very difficult sound for us in Spanish because the final sound is a sound we don't have in Spanish, okay? The final sound is this, widge, widge, okay? You don't say, you, you don't have to say which, okay? Which the witch is the this character from books for kids who has this uh, black hat and the big nose, right? That's the witch, la bruja, right? If you say language, g, finally the, the the final sound is witch, okay? Witch. Let me check the. Let me change this. Language. So, language, okay? Language. Wait a second. Language. Language, language, okay? Language, language. <laughs> can, you, can you listen to that? All right, good, language. So, hay una diferencia súper importante en lo que tiene que ver con lengua, lenguaje, acento, dialecto, y um, en general cuando hablamos de idiomas. En inglés, cuando nosotros decimos idiom, está mal referirse a una lengua como un idiom. ¿Ok? Idiom. ¿Por qué? Porque en inglés un idiom es una expresión propia del inglés que tiene otro significado. Por ejemplo, vamos a ver si es que aparece acá algún idiom. Mira, dice, an expression or phrase that doesn't follow regular rules of grammar or one whose meaning cannot be predicted from the meaning of the for, of the meaning of its individual parts. Por ejemplo, aquí dice, kick the bucket. La expresión kick the bucket es un idiom. Y este idiom significa to die, morir. Okay? O sea, es decir una cosa con otras palabras. Okay? Por ejemplo, si yo te digo, are you pulling my leg? Are you pulling my leg? ¿Me estás tirando la pierna? Si yo lo traduzco literalmente, uno dice, ¿qué querrá decir el profesor cuando le estás diciendo, are you pulling my leg? Pero si yo busco, hey Google, what's the meaning of pulling my leg? This is the definition of pull someone's leg. Deceive someone playfully, tease someone. To deceive somebody, pull someone's leg. To pull someone's leg. I don't think I'm going to find it here in the dictionary, ¿ok? Pero a eso quiero llegar. Primero, el concepto idiom no es una traducción literal del español cuando uno dice idioma, ¿ya? Primer punto. Un idiom tiene que ver con una expresión que significa totalmente, eh, algo totalmente diferente a lo que uno está diciendo, ¿ya? En este caso... ¿Son como modismos? Exactamente, modismo, expresiones. Yo lo diría como expresiones, más que eso, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, en este caso, pull someone's leg quiere decir... Eh, es como molestar a alguien, es como tratar de engañar a alguien, ¿ok? Si yo te digo, don't pull my leg, quiere decir, no me engañes, no me mientas. Pull my leg. Veamos si es que podemos encontrar el significado acá. Ya, y a las personas que les gusten este tipo de expresiones, hay un sinfín de expresiones, ¿ya? Y esto eh, es súper útil para las personas que quieren seguir aprendiendo inglés a un nivel más avanzado. ¿Por qué? Porque... Dominar estas expresiones no lo hace cualquiera. ¿ya? Son expresiones fuera de contexto que son totalmente diferentes a lo que uno está diciendo. Ya, no voy a perder tiempo buscándolo, pero eso es, ¿ok? Engañar a alguien. Ahí está, dice pulling my leg. Mira, y Google te lo traduce como jalando mi pierna. Nada que ver, ¿ok? Esa es la diferencia de eh, una traducción y una interpretación de algo. Cuando yo te digo you're pulling my leg, quiere decir que tú me estás mintiendo. You're lying to me. 
Siguiente, cuando hablamos de uh, accents, los acentos tienen que ver con la pronunciación más que con eh, el, la, la lengua en sí. ¿okay? Entonces, si yo hablo de un acento, puedo hablar del acento, uh, por ejemplo, de British accent, el acento británico. Puedo hablar de American accent, American English, right? Puedo hablar de uh, the Australian English or any other accent of English. Pero esto corre también para cualquier variedad de eh, lenguas. Por ejemplo, yo de lenguaje puedo hablar de eh, el acento chileno, el acento colombiano, el acento argentino, ¿cierto? El acento venezolano. O sea, son diferentes variedades de, una misma, de un mismo lenguaje. Ok, vamos acá. Eh, lengua versus lenguaje. Ok. Ahora. El lenguaje, por una parte uno puede decir que es la capacidad que tiene el ser humano de eh, expresarse mediante palabras, ¿cierto? Mediante sonido. Ahí dice, la distinción entre lengua y lenguaje no es precisa, ¿ok? Esto también es un poco complejo. Algunos dicen que language es la diferencia, por ejemplo, inglés is a language. English is a language, um, Spanish is a language, Russian and French are languages, right? ¿Por qué? Porque cada uno tiene su propia gramática, su sintaxis, su, eh, sus hablantes, su historia, todo lo que conlleva una, un lenguaje. Podríamos decir en ese caso que a language involucra todo, involves everything, right? La historia, la pronunciación, la gramática, la sintaxis, el vocabulario, la ortografía, su uso, todo, todo, todo lo que involucre está dentro de un lenguaje. ¿Ya? Y acá dice, mira, se suele considerar que todas las lenguas son lenguajes, pero no todos los lenguajes son lenguas. Eso también está bueno. ¿Por qué? Por ejemplo, tenemos la lengua, podemos hablar de la lengua de la mariposa, que es una película igual, o podríamos hablar de la lengua de las abejas, la lengua de los, eh, de los animales. ¿okay? ¿Por qué? Porque es una comunicación. Lengua más que nada se refiere a eso, a que hay una comunicación. Pero el lenguaje tiene que ver ya con los set de reglas, de vocabulario. Mira, dice acá, la lengua es el sistema de signos orales o escritos que utilizamos para comunicarnos dentro de un grupo. El lenguaje, por su parte, es la capacidad de todos. Esto, esto, este yo creo que es la más precisa de todas las definiciones. Por lo menos de las que estoy viendo aquí en la pantalla. ¿Se, ¿Se entiende más o menos, Vicky? Mira, dice, la lengua es el sistema de signos orales o escritos que utilizamos para comunicarnos dentro de un grupo. ¿Ok? Orales o escritos. El lenguaje, por su parte, es la capacidad de todos los seres humanos de comunicarnos mediante signos para expresar nuestros pensamientos. ¿Ok? Eso es diferente. El lenguaje tiene que ver con la capacidad de los seres humanos de expresarse. La lengua puede ser de cualquier ser. ¿Ok? Hay diferentes lenguas de los animales, de los computadores, de, qué sé yo, el sistema solar, whatever. ¿Ok? Pueden haber muchas lenguas. Pero el lenguaje específicamente tiene que ver con el ser humano. Y de ahí vamos entonces dividiéndolo en eh, acentos. Por ejemplo, un lenguaje puede tener varios acentos. También pueden haber dialectos, que los dialectos son diferentes a los acentos. ¿okay? Un dialecto, por ejemplo, el chino, sabemos que tiene varios dialectos. Quiere decir que es un lenguaje, pero tiene varias variantes. ¿okay? Son variantes de una, de una misma lengua. Acá, por ejemplo, dice, a variety of a language different from other varieties at the same language in that it has special features of sound, word arrangement, and vocabulary, and is used by a group of speakers set off from others either geographically or socially. Por ejemplo, aquí mismo te da un ejemplo del inglés británico. Dicen, Cockney is the colorful dialect spoken in the East End of London. El Cockney es un dialecto del inglés. ¿Por qué? Porque no sigue las reglas, porque tiene otras palabras, porque tiene otra pronunciación, a pesar de que vienen de la misma lengua, ¿ok? Pero es tanta la variación que probablemente una persona de Londres tal vez no va a poder entender a una persona que hable Cockney, ¿ok? Tiene que ver con diferencias de geográficas, como sale acá, o, o diferencias sociales. Por eso también dicen que en China una persona del norte de China probablemente no va a entender a una persona del sur de China, a pesar de que los dos hablan chino. ¿Ya? Porque la pronunciación, las reglas, la gramática, todo eso varía. 
Ya, así que ahí tiene diferentes conceptos relacionados con lenguaje. Entonces dijimos lengua, lenguaje, dialecto, acento y eh, lo otro que eran los idioms, que es una palabra que no tiene nada que ver acá, pero muchas veces se utiliza como un mala, una mala traducción de idioma en español. Profe. Adelante. Eso se llama cognado falso. Exacto, ya los eh, cognates o eh, false cognates. Cuando una palabra se ve igual en una lengua y en otra, o en un lenguaje y otro, ya que vamos a hablar con los conceptos más específicos, cuando una palabra se ve igual en, amba, en ambos lenguajes, pero tiene significados diferentes. ¿ya? Entonces ahí tenemos un buen ejemplo de un falso cognado o falso amigo. ¿Ok? It's raining en cats este and caso, dogs. En, en el lenguaje Mapudungun, ¿qué se, ¿cuál sería lo correcto utilizar? Es un lenguaje. Eso, eso estaría, lenguaje. eso sería lo correcto, un lenguaje. Es un lenguaje especial. Perfecto, súper. Gracias. Sí, exacto. Eh, Alejandra dice, it's raining cats and dogs. Exacto. Oh. Ya, eh, raining cats and dogs es una expresión, es un idiom, que significa que está lloviendo mucho, right? It's raining a lot. It's raining cats and dogs. Very good. Ok. Ahí también hay que tener cuidado con las expresiones, los idioms y las los proverbios o las frases como por ejemplo cuando uno dice you can't judge a book by its cover you can't judge a book by its, by its cover eso significa que no puedes juzgar mira la voy a escribir acá you can't judge a book by its cover no se puede juzgar un libro por su portada o sea las apariencias se engañan Okay? Eso es más que nada un proverbio, más allá que, más que un idiom. ¿ya? Los idioms, por otra parte, son expresiones que uno utiliza en el día a día. Más que, esta, más que esos proverbios. Sorry, escribí mal el can. Ahí sí. Ok. Um, all right. ¿Qué más le iba a decir? La Vicky preguntó si es que el Mapudungun... Yo tengo una duda también. Si alguien la sabe, me la puede responder después. Yo no sé realmente cómo se llama esta len este lenguaje. ¿Es Mapudungun o Mapuzungun? Que es una lengua de un pueblo... Se dice Mapudungun y se, y se dice Mapuzungun. ¿Se dice Mapuzungun? Ah, ok. Sí. Ok, vale. Y se escribe con D, Mapudungun. Exacto. Y con la última U con los dos puntitos. Ok, very good. Ya, yeah, súper bien. <ríe> si te interesa, bueno, estaban dando un curso de, de esta lengua en la Universidad de Chile, un curso gratuito abierto. La otra vez lo comenté, pero nadie pesco y yo quería tomarlo, pero no tengo tiempo para hacerlo. Así que, si te interesa, te puedo pasar el link. No sé si todavía estará abierto. Yo creo que no, pero igual. Bueno, chicos, chicas, vamos al libro. Porque ya estamos terminando la clase. Voy a avanzar un poco. Quiero ver lo que viene a continuación acá. ¿Se dieron cuenta que aquí en la conversación de estas personas... Ok, sorry. Let's go back to English. Did you realize that here um, each person gave an opinion about a language that they had to learn, but they also said quantities. They talked about quantities. Okay, that's something we have to learn now. We're going to talk about quantities. We're going to separate a group into smaller groups or into maybe a whole group, okay, using quantifiers. Quantifiers uh, is going to be the topic of next class, okay? We're going to check the different quantifiers in these opinions. For example, all most, some, a few, uh, a little, etc. All right? Please, please be careful. All right? So, um, is there any question? Is there any other uh, comment that you would like to ask or you would like to make? Is there any query, guys? Any question? Nope, no questions. Jocelyn, Angie, Jerlyn, Alejandra. No. Okay. No teacher. Okay, very good. Bueno, 
Chicos y chicas, thank you for watching the class. Okay, thank you for participating, for attending. Welcome all the new people uh, today. I would like to see you next class, next Monday, uh, on the basic English class. And if you have any question related to the class, to the schedule, to the links, or anything that I had said today that you would like to make clear, please tell me and I can give you, I don't know, I can send you a message or I can write a comment uh, in the group, okay? But say it, okay? Say it. Don't keep it to you, don't keep it to yourself. Please try to write it, try to express it. So that's how everybody is going to learn from you, okay? Thank you so much and um, see you next week. All right. Have a great weekend. Have a good rest of the day. And thank you for watching. Thank you very much for the class. Thank you, All thank right. you very much. Thank, thank you, Jesse. Thank, thank you, Tamara. Thank you. All right. See you next week. Bye, everybody, guys. Bye, Bye Vicky. Victoria. Bye, Julian. Take care. I see you. Bye, see you. Bye, guys. Thank you, teacher. Bye, Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, Alejandra.